This week we make every bad decision we can possibly think of. Drugs, picking up hitchhikers, breaking and entering, and the worst decision of all, watching 2006's Dark Ride. Adam's tripping balls and finally remembering the better movies with similar premises. <coughs> Waxwork. Scott's getting head in the basement and then taking that head home with him. And I'm running around babyface laughing about how stupid you are for falling for my trickery. Let's fall down this shitty K-hole with the movie this week on Horror Movie Night. So, so I picked the movie Dark Ride. Uh, I don't think it's a particularly good movie, although I remember it a little bit better. I, I, I remember it a little bit more fondly before I had rewatched it. Uh, oh, you don't think it's a very good movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the movie starts off in uh, 1982. We've got... And fucking Joycey. <laughs> this movie's saying Joycey. <laughs> with two twin yeah, we sisters. We didn't have Mir and F. Duke in this movie. We needed like two or three Duke characters. So we've got these two twin sisters. They're about to jump onto one of the amusement rides, and they are murdered in the ride. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of the only reasons why I even finally remember this movie is that, you know, I love any dark ride scenes in any movie. Like, literally any movie, I'm always like, man, I wish I was on that ride. Like, even as I'm watching this open scene, I'm like, man, these two little girls fucking suck at acting. But holy shit, this looks like a fun ride. The acting was just so... So bad. Well, first of all, the, my my first note: Are these girls from the craft? Because their <laughs> outfits look like they look like they could be in the craft. I understand it's just Catholic school girl outfits, but that just their hair matched with the outfits was great. And then you know, I I had to of course remind myself to to make fun of you for picking a movie about fun houses. But but those girls are just awful. Like they're. Their delivery is worse than when you fuck up our intros. <laughs> like, they're, they're really bad. Like, their inflection sucks. And I don't feel like the, the director was just like, just say the lines. Just say the lines and we'll be going on to the next part. And then when the, the first twin gets, I think that these girls just got cast in the movie because they're twins. Not because they're exceptional at anything except being <laughs> cast from the same genetic material. Um, but then they, they, the, the one girl gets picked up out of the, the ride, like just zip, she was on a, a, a pulley, you know, yeah. and just kind of like the, the, the sandbag on the other end got pulled, pulled and sent to the ground. And the other girl's like, stop it, stop it. You're not going to scare me. That's not how, like, it's not like she jumped out of the ride. She got <laughs> physically picked up like that phone. Yeah, she's. She's one hell of a prankster if she pulled that off. <laughs> yeah, and then she's like, oh, well, I guess I'll continue to sit on the ride. And then she sees her eviscerated sister. And I'm just like, man, the writing in this movie is not as strong as suit. And I kind of knew what I was, I mean, I knew what I was in for. But it just kind of reminded me of a decade ago when at the After Dark Film Fest was the shit. And I looked forward to like, oh, what are their picks going to be this year? Yeah. And then. I mean, it was never like it was super, super great, but it was always... This was that first year, too, which is why I guess I remember it so fondly, was that it was such a new thing, and I was working at a video yeah. store at the time. So I had watched this along with the other eight movies that had come out. As crazy as it sounds, this is one of the better ones of that series of eight. Like I would What say was the first set? The first set was this, uh, Grave Dancers... I think it was called Resurrection. It was from the guy who did the Japanese ring. And those were like the ones that I... Th and uh, the Hamiltons were the ones... The Hamiltons was actually the best one. Yeah, the, the Hamiltons was definitely sure. the best one. But it's not one that we would ever uh, do. No, it's it's too on the nose. Yeah, because there was four that were like fairly good. And then there was four that were like borderline unwatchable. Yeah, so then there was, there, there was actually... I think there was more than eight, but there was the abandoned, there was Dark Ride, the Grave Dancers, the Hamiltons, Penny Dreadful, which was terrible, reincarnate the doll. No, Penny Dreadful was the one where the girl's trapped in a car, even though she has a phobia of cars. Oh yeah, that one's bad. Oh, that was so bad. <laughs> uh, reincarnation, unrest, which is the one where the only like bragging rights they had was we used real dead bodies in the movie. Ew. Yeah, because it was about like pre med students or whatever. Oh, yeah, that one. I didn't watch that one. Yeah, and then Wicked Little Things, which was, like, their version of, like, a the children. The Killer Kids? Yeah, yes. The Killer Kids. And that one was really fucking bad, too. So, like, Dark Ride was in the higher half of these films. Yeah, it's still shit, but it's, like, better than the other shit. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. So so let me get this out of the way, though. I don't really think this movie is that shitty. Like, it's For what mediocre. it is, it's fun. 
Like it's yeah. it's dumb, but it's it's fun in its own way. Um, I know I know Adam will disagree because he doesn't like fun. But... <laughs> uh, there weren't child of... acting fun. That's the well. There was child acting, and I really I didn't like this enough. scene in the beginning. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was missing. If it, there was child acting, I would it would have pushed pushed me over the edge into complete blind rage, <laughs> and that would have made an even better a better watch and a better episode. But. <laughs> So um, I just okay. Go ahead. I was gonna say so. Let's let's jump to the present day just a little bit so we can meet our main character who is uh, oh, oh. who's Ginger the girl Elijah who Wood. Wakes up and she's like, oh, big stretch. I just woke up. Look at my sexy nighty. <laughs> like who dresses yeah. like that? I have a line here that just says, when a character needs to state, I'm 19 years old. You know that you've made <laughs> terrible casting decisions. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I'm 19 years old. What do I, what do I know about love? <laughs> like, like, yeah. Honey, you're not 19. <laughs> Uh, I also have a note that says I'm refusing to learn any of these characters' names. From here on out, they're going to be Ginger Elijah Wood, Walmart Nev Campbell, rapper from Together, generic dude, and blonde girl. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my God, the rapper from Together! I was trying to remember what what I knew him from, <laughs> but I was not about to go like dig into the the the, the backwaters of IMDb to like figure it out uh but you're also missing out on yes ginger elijah wood is the kid from the sandlot yes yeah and that's how i have him in all my notes is sandlot I just have <laughs> yeah. sandlot because they're yeah, just the also, most they this is literally the most paint by numbers teenager that you could like oh. like every single one of them is like okay we just need to do the closest thing to the teenager from any horror movie ever right but the thing is that the, aren't they supposed to be like sophomores in college yeah okay so here here's what <laughs> this is my first time watching it and so i didn't know the twist uh which is fine because the twist was kind of stupid but we'll get there um so of course i know how much you love the 90s so i figured that you picked this because the kid from the sandlot was in it and i was like uh what is this it's a condom and I put in parentheses, Matt's spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually I have a note where I'm like, wow, Sandlot Kid is literally playing Matt Kelly. Did you see him just start spouting <laughs> off about movies and nobody <laughs> wanted to play, like listen? <laughs> this one uh, this one Oscar in 1976, all the deer hunter. Oh, let me quote blah 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 blah. I'm like, oh my god, Matt, if he was an autist. <laughs> Man. It's, it is Matt. the most it is like the most offensive uh parody of a of a film geek. In a long fucking time. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really, really inappropriately awkward. Because, okay, so that guy played in the Sandlot. I didn't look at his IMDb. I don't really care what else yeah, he's he, been in. He was in the Big but, Green as well, just for the record. But... Oh, 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 my bad. Well, he actually <laughs> hit puberty. Um, so he's been in three movies, let's say. And yeah. this is like, I think that he thought this was going to be his his start on like a serious adult acting career because he gave it all he was just 110 percent this whole goddamn film and it's not that good like his acting is not that good no. we were i was watching this with a friend and like midway through the movie she just looks at me and goes there's not a single attractive person in this movie it's <laughs> i know even the hot quote-unquote girls not that hot uh so so then we jump to this insane asylum scene Whereas like uh, this dude's uh-oh. been been tied up for like twenty years, but you know you slap him with a piece of meat and he just like hulks the fuck up and suddenly it's time to break out. Um, okay, so yeah, so- that was ridiculous. <laughs> but I, I did want to mention that this movie came out in two thousand and six, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so they must have been making it in two thousand five, probably set in two thousand and five. Um, they keep going like. Oh my god, I'm so happy you convinced me to go to New Orleans. I'm like, guys, you know what happened in New Orleans in 2005, right? Oh, oh, shit, Adam. <laughs> Damn, oh, that is no. so but that, and that just kills my next comment because like you're missing a couple of these great great lines like the guy from Together is like, "The road is calling, baby." Uh, as he's singing this <laughs> shitty song and and the the shitty fashion decisions that everybody has made. It's just so and, and he keeps on referring to himself in the third person as Big Daddy. And I was like, Big Daddy better put his fucking acoustic in a case. Because he's just walking around with an acoustic. He's going to toss it in the back of the, the van. Dumbass. He's but got then, that uh, weird car setup where the passenger seat is backwards. 
Yeah, that's so weird. Um, <laughs> but like, I guess in the grand scheme of the weird shit that the weird decisions that everybody makes in this movie, that's pretty low on the totem pole. But the asylum orderlies should know by now that you don't fuck with your patients like that. You antagonize the patients, you die. That's just it's a it's a horror rule. And we've talked about this numerous times. Like, remember in Willard, that guy touched his bread. Oh, <laughs> or he touched his cheese. <laughs> they're awful and they deserve to die. So it's well, like... they, th- this scene was so weird because he kept like talking about like, yeah, he's a vegan. He needs some meat. He needs to get a, a nice beef. You thought he was going to show like, a dick in his mouth, didn't you? Yeah, I was like, are they going to try to <laughs> rape this gigantic dude? Like, this seems like such a bad idea. How relieved no, were you just, when he just pulled just out a regular him. piece of meat? You're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, I was so relieved. I was so relieved. <laughs> it was a metaphor. So, uh, you know, like, they might have said that he needed some meat in them, in, in him. But then he's the one who rammed his fucking fist to the other guy's chest. So, I, I'm that guy who got got fisted, quote, unquote, haha. Um, <laughs> he is acting 110% too, all in his eyes. He's just like, how can I make it look like I'm in absolute agony? I think I'll just gurgle a little bit. <laughs> uh, so, the ne- but, but, so they're on the road, and, and the next important thing that happens is that Sherry Moon Zombie gets picked up. Yeah, so I wrote a thing in here that just says, the hitchhiker is both the hottest and the worst actor in this movie. She Okay, she <laughs> might overact more than anybody else because her little soliloquy about um, about just being a weird flower child is like Heath Leather, Ledger Joker level acting. It's just, <laughs> oh. it could possibly be the best acting we've seen in months on horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I hated that scene though. It oh, it's so, so weird. It's it like... made you feel though. It made you feel. <laughs> and, and the scene right before they pick her up and it's all these cuts of them talking in the van, uh, two thirds of those shots were out of focus. Just, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Can we talk about the uh, – we skipped over a little bit, but when they stop at the gas station and oh, – uh, I and skipped s- over that because that scene sucks. And, and Sandlot Kid finds the thing uh, advertising the dark ride. But uh, – He also finds the no matter how much you shake and dance poem, and they try and present it as if it's like new material. I don't, everybody fucking knows that. Like, <laughs> but they, there's that really that weird – there's that really weird scene with just – all of a sudden, the guy's just sitting there emotionless, and it's like, hey, we're going to I was like, this- okay, he's dead. I thought they were going to find yeah. a dead body. And then he's just suddenly a weird, eccentric guy with no teeth who wants a, <laughs> who wants a blowjob. So they get they get to the carnival. They decide for whatever reason. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Because, because fucking Sandlot Kid presents them with that, uh, with that pamphlet, and he just all of a sudden becomes like Mr. Exposition Man. Oh, where they're well, like, well, she's so like, does... well, what is, what is a dark ride? And he's like, well, in 1893, Sadius D. Ride decided he would have to through a conveyor, and that was. Like... It's it That's is not uh, the most egregious thing he does in this film, but that is right up there. It's also pretty high up there with. There's at least three giant exposition scenes. Um, yes, I fast forwarded through those. I scrubbed them. Uh, so so. Uh, they decide to save money by spending the night in the funhouse, which is always right out the gate no, one of the they worst just decisions. Slept in the fucking van. van. Yeah, when when Wal when Walmart Nev Campbell was like, "I'm just going to sleep in the van," I was like, "That seems like a great idea, actually." <laughs> if you want to save money, and instead of driving out of your way, further away from where your destination is, um, so. They they go into the dark ride. I have a note here that just says, at its worst, the set in this movie is pretty dope. Yeah. Oh yeah. The dude from Together is dressed so 1997 throughout this entire movie. <laughs> like he's rocking like Junko jeans and shit. But like, then my other note was like, if they're trying to sleep here, then why are they turning everything on? Because it's just like mechanical shit going and screaming and loud noises. Like, if your goal you're is missing them. Th- 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 that that isn't the worst bit of shitty writing in this scene. The worst bit, actually, I think that this is the worst bit of logic in the entire movie. They turn everything on, even though why would there be power? 
Yeah. It's been shut off. Like the power should have been shut off in 1989. Well, it's reopening and... in a couple days, I thought. Or did they make Yeah, that but up? then as soon as they pull up, the chick's like, wow, this place looks closed. And I mean, like, closed for the winter closed. It looks like nobody's been here. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, why would they turn on all, everything if the cops come by every couple hours? Yeah. The cops would just, they're patrolling. They'd be like, oh, that's weird. There's light on. And it takes the cops all night to get back. Like, it just. Really, really bugs the shit out of me. So, so then we get to what is pretty much the most slasher film moment. Uh, they're all just smoking pot while the dude from Together gives them all of the exposition of the first like <laughs> five minutes of this movie. Uh, it is, it you know, you've seen it a thousand times, but then all of a sudden they hear a scream, and they run over, and it looks like Walmart Nev Campbell's throat has been slit. And everyone starts freaking out, and it turns out that it was all a big, confusingly prank. intricate prank. <laughs> bro, prank, bro. It took, it took. It's my note here says this prank took hours of planning and banked on a shit ton of luck. Like, like it for just the You're two of them wrong. to be like, right. Here's what we're gonna do. There's this place. We're going to have to find a way to break into it. You're going to s- sleep in the van, but you sneak in. We got to get someone to mold this fake neck wound for us. Um, so incredibly convoluted and complicated. <laughs> yeah. um, wait, wait, wait. Did, is this before oh, or ahead. after the gratuitous tit shot? No, the, uh, that's that's much later. Okay. Well, I I just I I really could not follow. Oh. <laughs> Half of the stuff that was happening in here, like chronologically, I, I was watching it chronologically, but. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, wait, so I do. Actually, I, I, it's coming up soon because the next note I said I have says your heart isn't what I'm trying to get a rise of because she's talking yes. about your dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, shortly after this. Uh, well, one one second, one second, because okay, I have go. to roll up, roll back the clock for a second. The scene where he is like telling them all the story of um, of uh, you know Jonah or whatever killing his cousin. Yeah, uh, Sandlot is telling them that story. He he's standing behind that hay cart, right? Right. He's, yeah. He's standing behind the hay cart and he's telling them that story the whole time. And if you'll notice, there's like an over the shoulder shot uh, where you can see him and the hay cart and them all in front of it, right? So he finishes his story, and he walks around to the front of the hay cart, and he sits down, and then they're all like, let's get out of here, and it cuts back, and he's fucking behind the hay cart at that over-the-shoulder shot again. Like, they, like they fucked up. There was, like, this huge, like, I was like, oh, my God, did that just happen? I love how excited I guess I'm the you only get, one excited uh, about that. I'm, you get okay, so I'm excited about continuity errors. I love it. <laughs> Um. So, so yeah. So there's yeah. Because aren't aren't you the one that w- I was just thinking about this when I was walking the dogs this morning. This is so funny that you would even bring that up. So remember when we did uh, TCM two and you were so upset about the fact that they reused the incoming mail line. Yeah. Or is that you, man? That was me. Oh my god! I was just thinking about that incoming mail. Incoming mail. <laughs> let me let me try this one more time. One more time, Toby. Toby, Toby one more time. In coming mail. Oh, that was the one. That was the one. Well, we can use them both. It's fine. <laughs> I also have a note here. I, this is the movie I probably put the most random quotes from as notes. Uh, it says, "Watch out for the tracks." I'm foreshadowing, you know. Um, which actually didn't come into play. I was shocked. I thought for sure that someone was going to trip on the tracks after he said that to her. But uh, so somebody somebody trips on the tracks in our next episode. <laughs> Uh, or the um, previous episode. It's just, See, it's this so, is why we have to record I mean, them. When in did you order. guys realize <laughs> that Sand Sandlot Kid was the twist? When did you realize? Uh, I I realized it when he fucking told me. <laughs> like I was you, like, not. I was not there. So are you for real? Because I remembered the little kid playing chess outside of the thing, and immediately, as soon as he was like. Yeah, actually, I grew up near this town. I was like, oh, oh that's you. That's him. That's the chess kid. That's the, you're the. <laughs> so we uh wait wait, wait, I... wait 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 we forgot it there's a decapitation no we're getting there we're getting there oh oh we haven't gotten to the boob shot okay. yeah so so uh so when i first saw this movie to answer your question adam uh i had rented it from the video store and i take i take it over to my friend's house and we all watch it but it's like 
middle of the afternoon movie watching. So we're like kind of pseudo watching. We're you know it's kind of summerish. So like people are walking around, um, and then suddenly we're just like because we're not totally paying attention. Someone's just like, "Where's the dude from Big Lo- uh, from the Big Green?" I'm like I don't know. I think he may have died. Like we just had no clue where he went. And then someone's like, "I bet he's the killer." Like and that was like. The joke were like, yeah, he suddenly just hooked up to this amazing size. He has nothing to do with anything. And then it was like, oh, look at that. We were wrong. But he was like the mastermind. He wasn't the killer. Yeah. So. Yeah. At, at minute 50, he disappears from this movie and he doesn't come back till minute one or till an hour 35. And he, he's just gone the whole time. Yeah. It, I th- thought it was because we were allowed to be uh, watching other actors instead of Sandlot Kid. Yeah. Uh, so, so what Scott was talking about though is there is the scene where the hitchhiker girl is just like, "Yo, I'm going to suck your dick to uh, the dude from <laughs> Together," and uh, throughout all the other, like, there's like four different things all happening simultaneously while this dude's getting the longest blowjob known to man. Uh, uh, and I'm I'm pretty sure that you would know if the person performing fellatio on you is getting decapitated, like. <sighs> He's just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he's like loving it. I'm like, pretty sure that you would know that yeah. there would be like maybe she'd bite down or I don't know, something. I mean, I'm not, I don't really want to test that theory. So but... right before that blowjob, though, one other person dies first. <laughs> and I right actually – Right before that blowjob. Yeah, I think that it's actually a really I, – I really like the reveal of this scene is they're walking through the dark ride after the one dude's gotten pissed off. And he's like, yo, man, how many friends you got now? None. And he, like, walks off or whatever. And then they just find him, and he's, like, tied up in the ride, but, like, sliced apart into different pieces. And, like, all of the ropes are moving his arms and stuff around. And it actually is a pretty cool-looking shot. Like, I really like that shot, actually. Um, yeah. I actually think... I was, I was bummed out because at one point in the movie, they said, oh, the killer kept recreating uh, scenes from from the ride and killing people... And then, you know, recreating scenes with them. And I was like, okay, so it's it's a little like waxwork. That was the joke that I put in the, in the intro. It was like, you're going to have all these different, you know, settings or exhibits or, or part of the ride. And, and he's going to get killed. You know, he's going to kill them and then make them part of the ride. But that was the only guy he really did that to. Everybody else, he just, he just kind of killed them. Yeah. I, I So here's the one thing that I, that I concluded while watching this movie. Because there's a few things that I think are pretty not bad about it. And it's like, the one note, it just says, it's kind of a shame that this movie's so bland because filming-wise, it's actually got some really cool shots and, like, uses its set really well. Like, it, the guy's not an incompetent director at all. I think he also wrote it, though, and he's not a competent writer. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. Uh, but I love the I love the blowjob death sequence specifically because it's equipped with him with his hands in the air the whole time, which I just think is the most comedic thing for an actor to do in blowjob sequences. <laughs> like, like Matt's thought about this a lot. Just like well, because like there's that awesome ending of the FP too, where it's just like both hands behind the head oh, standing yeah, up. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. such an absurd position to be in. Um, <laughs> It looks like he's on a roller coaster where he's just like, Woo! <laughs> and then like he, you know, he's holding that chick's head and then per- I'm pretty sure all he does for the next 20 minutes is walk in a circle crying um, <laughs> as it follows pretty other sure, people for a bit. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I would walk around in a circle crying if I decapitated my girlfriend or whatever after while she's filleting me. Do you think yeah, he I thinks that he did that. it? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my god, my penis is a killer. He just, he just pulled too hard and was like, no! <laughs> like, <laughs> he had like super sp- Superman sperm where it just like shot right out the back <laughs> of her head. Uh, but uh, but it, it, like when when the killer showed up and he had like and he chopped the girl's head off and the guy realized what was what had happened, I was like, oh man, fam, just kill me now. I don't even want to live after this. This is fucked up. Like, no more. Um, so I also have a note that just says, "Are you what? What rope is holding that hulking beast of a person?" And additionally, yeah. how did he Spider-Man down so silently? 
because uh, there's a scene where the girl's staying there and like she's looking for the killer and he just kind of slowly drops down from a rope tied to part of the attraction and it's like this dude is a giant muscly beast of a person there is no rope that is in that ride that is going to suspend his body comfortably yeah they were like i guess the whole point was like oh he lived in the ride so he knows it like better than anybody but i'm like did he also it was he also like in cirque du soleil like how the fuck did he know how to do this shit (laughs) Then we jump. Uh, then we jump to. Uh, I said I thought we couldn't top that blowjob scene, but then a cop gets his head split open. Um, oh, does that count as decapitation? I don't know. I don't know. Head trauma. Let's just say head trauma. Yeah, there's some head trauma, but yeah. So they because if the ride is crushing, open. If a head crushing counts as decapitation, then I'd say that that counts as decapitation. Fair enough. Uh, it's definitely the most expensive special effect in the movie. Um, <laughs> but they uh so so yeah there's they the lights being on in the house draws the attention of the cops fucking finally and they show up he's like come on girl you gotta get out of here and then slice uh the knife straight through the head splitting it entirely in half uh in an absurd way uh the little quivering lip as his hand reaches up to his face in disbelief of what just happened to him <laughs> Before the head splits, it's... I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> Why? Not like this. Um, and, then, uh, and then he dies. And then it's like... The last like three minutes of this movie is so rushed and like unsatisfactory. Uh, the girl like... Smashes through with the van... Or the dude smashes through with the van. Sends the the villain flying through the air slams into the a, most a, a conveniently spike. placed wall of spikes yeah like straight come on. straight through a wall of spikes uh so together and walmart nev campbell are trying to get out and that's when uh big green sandlot shows up reveals that he's been the mastermind kills the dude from together and then the girl runs outside in the rain crying and credits like it, it's it's a very it's a very okay, sudden so ending. Question. Um. So so uh, Sandlot kid, his big brother was his hero, right? Yeah. Why did he need Kathy to help kill him? He was like, "Thanks, Kathy." Like, why? That that made no sense. Well, it wasn't the point. Wasn't to kill the brother. The point was to kill all the friends. And then I guess after together dies, it, the, the the whole goal was reached. They killed all the friends. Yeah. But the, the, but Kathy's still alive. Like she can tell people what Sandlot Kid did. Well, and, I, and, I assume that he's delusional enough that he thinks that she's like totally into him because they planned the first prank together. So she would be like totally down with his other prank of murdering everybody. <laughs> it's a prank, bro. It's a. Pr- it's just a joke. It's a prank, bro. You hit me with the fucking phone. <laughs> you hit me with the fucking phone, Dick. <laughs> Matt, Man, why did you make you us imagine? watch this movie? Oh, it's just a fucking prank, bro. <laughs> yeah, I got you guys so good. <laughs> but that's that's Dark Ride in a nutshell. It's not a very good movie. Um, but it's not like a movie that I will probably never, ever watch again, but probably won't watch for a really, really long time. <laughs> Are you fucking sorry? <laughs> what, what did you guys watch this week? I'm going to go first. Um, I've been watching this show called Brain Dead. Um and it stars uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Um, okay. And, and pretty much nobody else. Uh, the whole premise of the show is that alien ants come to come to Earth on a comet, and then they get inside your head, and um, they make you act weird. They la- they land in like Washington, so they're they're getting inside the heads of like politicians. So all the Republicans start going like super crazy Republican and all the Democrats start going like super crazy Democrat. Um, And like when people when people like get confronted about the bugs, the bugs just will make their like heads explode. Uh, So like there's a lot of people's heads exploding and there's a lot of people. It's a cartoon though? No, no, no. It's a real life show. It's a it's a you know, it's not an animated show. Oh, but uh, like people's heads will explode, and like chunks of brain will fall out of their ear, and it's just I don't what? know. It's yeah, it's super strange. Um, it's so hard to explain it. I- I'm kind of enjoying it enough, like I'm watching it, but it's 
it I don't know. It feels like a horror it's show like that was made for for middle aged women or something. That is strange. What? What's it called? Brain Dead. It's called Brain Dead. Yeah, or Brain Dead. Brain Dead. It might be a Canadian thing. Don't forget. The show no, is based in Washington D.C. Yeah. What yeah. Canadian it's, shows can't be based I, in the U.S. <laughs> nope. No, never. <laughs> uh, it's a CBS TV show. I don't. I don't know. That that's so that's so weird. Yeah, it's. Just I mean, strange. there's a reason you guys haven't heard of it. Um, even even like the release schedule of it is like they'll release a schedule like a show one week, and then it'll be three weeks before they release it again, and then there'll be two in a row, and then it'll be like a month before they re- like the show's not gonna last. Like it, it, there's something fucked up going on with it, but I mean it's 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 watchable. It's something to pass the fucking time at least. <laughs> I just needed some sort of horror show to to fill up a gap for me and and i i don't know i picked a stinker on it it's not great why didn't you start watching um uh shit supernatural because i'm not gay I, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> uh, I was actually going to say um uh the strain oh god oh, I, I have watched i watched the whole first season of the strain that movie or that show is fucking hilarious it it, it takes itself so seriously but it is the stupidest shit. Like, it's so funny. It's fucking... Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> it's, it's so bad, it's good. Up. Like, it, it's laughably bad. It's, it's, if you watch it on that premise, fucking perfect. Perfect. All right, well, I'll go. Uh, I watched Bad Milo. How'd you with, like it? Uh, not, not that much. I have nice things to say. But overall, I would not recommend it to anyone. Um, so did you watch it, Matt? I own it. I call it Ask It Case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That made it Man, you've you been know. waiting. <laughs> you have been yeah. just waiting for somebody to ask you about that movie, haven't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it took five years, the, but it's finally here. <laughs> like, the, and the, the funniest part about that is that you know that he's got at least another dozen movies that he's got <laughs> shitting against where he's waiting for you to be like, oh, I watched this. Uh... I, I enjoy Bad Mile. I don't think it's great, but I I appreciate it that it was like really un like unashamedly trying to be like a weird basket case type movie. Yeah, yeah, I, I respect it too. I don't well, maybe not respect. I appreciate what it was attempting to to do, but I just felt like I couldn't care less about anybody, and they got a bunch of pretty big name actors in it. Uh, or, I mean, or maybe they're B level, but they're still relatively large. the The best thing I can say, though, well, the storyline sucks. It's just so stupid. But the best thing I can say about it is that Milo is awesome. Milo's kinda, awesome. Milo's awesome and kind of cute. And my favorite thing is the sound effect that they use for whenever it goes back into Ken Marino's ass. <laughs> it's just like a boom noise. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I, Milo is actually really cute when he's like, ah, and then he blinks his eyes when he's like, no, no, stop it. <laughs> really cute. I would love to have like a, a, a life size Milo toy, not a real life size Milo in my ass though. Um, I don't know. I guess I wasn't expecting much for them to try and make a full length movie about an ass demon. Um, but yeah, I, I, I post on the fucking Duke. Uh, Twitter page about watching it. I had a gigantic bean burrito for dinner and then watched it before bed. And so I felt Ken Marino's pain. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely felt his pain. I, I uh, empathize with him very much. Um, so that was that was last week. And uh, I just started watching. Uh, I, maybe not just started, but I, last night I started working on um, We Are What We Are. Or I'm, I'm not sorry. No, no. Uh, we Are Still Here. Sorry. Uh, somebody on the Horror Movie Night Facebook page suggested that we watch it, or they asked if we'd seen it, and Adam and I were like, yeah, we haven't seen it. Um, it's on Netflix, and it's a haunted house movie, and uh, just starting to get to the twist, I, the, or maybe the, the main concept, and it's cool. I mean, I, I love, if you can do a haunted house movie well in 2015, 2016, I, you get a huge thumbs up from me, because I love of haunted house movies i just think that most of them are just garbage so i mean it, they, they don't happen very much anymore but this one's got a pretty cool uh concept have you guys uh, matt, matt have you watched that yet no i haven't and i know adam hasn't because 
He's busy watching Brain Dead. Yep, sorry. <laughs> oh no. Oh, um, can I ask you guys a question? Do you guys remember Cat People? Yes. The one, is yeah. that one based on um, a Stephen King? Book? No, it's a remake was... of a '40s film. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, thinking of Sleepwalkers. I just wanted to say that I call it Kitty Woman. Thank you. <laughs> God Adam, damn it. That's not, that's not how it works. You have to wait for one of us to bring it up before you do the shitty pun. Nope, he, oh, got, he, got, he right. got the shitty I, pun in. I think in. I know what my next pick is. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. It, it would contain your M.O. of a movie that's not very good but has lots of nudity from a semi-hot-looking chick. Uh, so I watched the uh, upcoming blu-ray release of session nine uh that movie still holds up i really enjoy that movie uh and then also for the blog uh i've been in the middle of re-watching all of community and uh that sh- i always forget how much fun that show is community is such a really well done <laughs> show in the sense that it is complete and total absurdist comedy but still has such heavy emotional moments throughout it because they're so good at like making you care about these characters. Um, and, and like, even in the most absurd moments, they can make an absurd thing seem like a really emotionally important deal. Uh, and that's such a shame when you get to season four, when they've removed the entire writing team that did that so well. And then every episode just feels like a fan film more than an, an actual episode of community. Uh, it, it never recovered either because season five and six, even when they brought Dan Harmon back, just I don't know, it lost its spark. I I, know. I think that there's that part of it where it's like that fear of getting fired again. Like it seemed like they rein back what like season five is definitely better than season four, and I still haven't gotten around to watching the uh, Yahoo years of of season six, but. It's- Fucking awful. I'll show you. I, there's one episode in particular. I'll show it to you. You just won't even want to subject yourself to that season. And I like Dan Harmon. I like what he uh, like pretty much everything he does. Season six of Community was fucking garbage. It's Ugh, bad. That's a shame. But yeah, it's it's. Uh, I would say it's on par with like the way Arrested Development is, where you have to watch everything in order or nothing. Every, makes yeah. Sense. <laughs> like, um. But yeah, it's a really it's a really solid show until season four, and then season four just completely took everything away from it that was good. And it's not that, like by sitcom standards, season four is a good season, but it's a terrible season of Community, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I hear your dog in the background. Rome just said, "Yep, yep, yep." That's what it is. I get it. <laughs> I watch Community, why haven't you? <laughs> Maybe because I have a job, you fucking bum. That is 2006's Dark Ride, as picked by me. Uh, thank you guys for listening in, giving us our rates and reviews on iTunes, subscribing on SoundCloud, and all of that other fun, good jazz. Make sure that you send us suggestions at hmnpodcast at gmail.com. Do you like your horror movie discussions fast and slightly unhinged? Do you enjoy drinking alcohol and swearing? Do you have a strange interest in characters such as John Wayne Gacy, Albert Fish, and the Killer Clowns of Allentown? Then Scott and Liam vs. Evil is the new horror podcast for you. Aye, what he said. Find us online at iTunes, SoundCloud, Facebook, and Twitter. Scott and Liam vs. Evil. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 